Hi guys, welcome to the Cambridge Way. It's Lori and today we're going to do some test dyeing on this Burnett. It's 100% acrylic polyester. It's almost like, I'm not even sure what we're calling it, chenille. Uh, to use to sew on our little tiny pillows that we make with cross stitch. So I'm going to do some experimenting and see which dies up best. I got some Rit Dye More and this is for synthetic. So this technically should work the best. And I got this in a Midnight Navy and a Tropical Teal. Fun. And then I had two of the regular which say they are for all purpose. And I have a charcoal gray and a pearl gray. Now I have some jars I dye. These are what I use to dye yarn and to mix dyes when I do wool yarn, but that's fine. These jars are not eaten out of. And they were dirty, apparently. One of them had some yarn dye on it. So I have four of those. I have made equal lengths of this. Um, I wouldn't go too big with it. Yarn does tend to tangle when it's wet. So I feel like, um, you know, this is a manageable piece. If, you know, you want to dye more, I would look at your yarn dyeing videos. They'll tell you how to wrap it up. Um, so I have manageable pieces cut. I have plastic cutlery. I did pick up it's a pasta drying thing, but it's really neat. I got it at the Target dollar spot, but look how it stores away. Flat. Um, it was $3. I was grabbing some essentials and saw it and thought, dyeing yarn. So this is what I'm going to use to dry all the yarn on. Um, in the directions for the all purpose, it says to use a little salt and a teaspoon of Dawn, but I'm not making that much. And then we're gonna do some stirring, oh, and rubber gloves. I also wanna do a little testing with doing some multiple colors. So I have a couple pieces here. We're gonna try doing some funness with that. And I will need a spoon. A measuring spoon but I'm not going to use a measuring spoon because I feel like this synthetic dye might be uh, toxic so we won't do that so let me change directions and let's get going okay now I know you can totally buy dye or dye buy trims already dyed up and I have and I will but I just think it's fun to try to do things on my own Wait, I don't need gloves for this part okay so the one thing I will tell you, price-wise, I got this for $5 with a coupon, and it's 220 yards. So that was $5, and these are about $5.99 each, but you get a ton of dye. So keep that in mind. We are going to take, and I'm just going to do one because i got to rinse my spoon. I just have a disposable spoon. We're going to put the same amount of dye in each pot, which is two spoonfuls. Because two spoonsfuls of sugar makes the medicine go down, right? You just want to be careful, guys. The stuff stains. What's on my hands is not this dye, but it does stain. So I'm going to put two spoons in each of these, and then I'll get back with the hot water. Okie dokie. So everybody has had their two teaspoons or two serving spoons of their prospective dye lot color and a stir. Now I'm keeping this rag handy. It's disposable. It's like one of those Clorox cloths in case we get anything on us or on our surface. And then I'm just going to take this fabric, the yarn goodness, and submerge it. That's it. And let it sit. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to do all the things. But look at how quickly it picked up color already. And I'm just going to let it sit for a little while in its perspective container. I'm going to say 30 minutes. So let's set the timer for 30 minutes. 
and we'll see what we get. I'm gonna come back, I need to go get a measure or a scoop, and we're gonna do some fun little dyeing of these little pieces to see if we can get some multicolors because I think that'll be fun. Alrighty, I went and got my measuring spoon out of my dye kit. So I, in my garage I have, it's called acid dye, and you use it for natural fibers like wool. Animal fibers, I should say. And I use these to scoop dye out of pots like this. The one thing I would tell you that instantly I've noticed when dyeing cotton and dyeing this is the one difference is um, when I dye, I'm looking for a cup I can toss away when I'm done. That's all right, I'll just run it under cold water. But when I dye wool, whatever the two teaspoons I put in here, the fiber of the wool actually sucks the dye out of the water and you're left with clear water. And once your water is clear, that is exactly how you know that your wool has exhausted the dye from its pot. It's very interesting. Now, obviously, if you put way too much dye in it, it won't, it won't drink it all up. It just can't. But when you put, a, you know, this amount, it will soak up all the dye into its fibers. It's very fascinating. All right. So here we have this color. I'm going to go in here to the navy. And I'm just trying to make more of like a tie dye, I guess. Since we have plenty of dyes in here. And the thing that you can do with this situation is uh, put a, the lid on your jar and you can dye more. You can mix your colors together for sure and dye, um, you know, different batches, different colors. There's 200 yards here. My plan is eventually I'll dye up all this if it works and which one I like the best. And then I'm gonna gift it to people because who doesn't need this color yarn? All right, so this is the test. And then I'm gonna put a little hot water in it shortly after, but I want the fibers to soak up some of that dark dye because I don't know what color we're gonna get if I add just some hot water to these. And these little containers I got the Dollar Tree, I think last summer, they're like a hot dog plate. Coffee guys, coffee. Now, when it's time to rinse, I'll go into my sink, rinse them out. Look at that, how nice that has picked up. And then I will show you what they look like when they're wet and what they look like when they're dry. I will tell you that soaking them overnight is not going to make that big of a difference. It's going to take on what it's going to take on. We'll let them sit for 30 minutes and call it. These here, I'm going to maybe put some gray in with one and some water in with the other and see what we get. Just some gray water in here with this one. And then I'll do just straight hot water with the other one. How fun is that? And this is just some gray dye water. Any fabric that you're using, material, clothing that you're wearing, be prepared. This will stain it. So just keep that in mind. Oh, that looks fun. Some more of this gray on it. Okay, and it'll absorb up the rest. And then I'm just gonna put some straight hot water over here. And not a lot, I just want a little bit. All right, and then we're just gonna let everybody sit. When the timer comes off, I will have you watch me, watch with me while I rinse everybody. All right, guys, what we're gonna do is some pearl gray. Now I did cheat and look at one of the other colors and it's it's not taken even with the synthetic dye. So I'm gonna have another plan in place. If you can hear in the background, I've got my tea kettle boiling. I'm gonna add more dye and more hot water to these and do a second batch. But for right now, 
you see how this is the pearl gray you see how dark it is but watch watch all this dye come out now that actually isn't too bad the teal didn't do so well but you really want to run these clear because you don't want any of the dye to come off on your project so this one's not too bad this is a pretty good representation of the pearl gray but next time I'm gonna add more dye and let it sit longer in a little more hot water. And I made four more cuts of the fabric. So that looks pretty good actually for a pearl gray. This is the pearl gray. And that, I hope you can see it. It is wet, but it came out pretty good. And this is not even the dye that specified for uh, polyester, which is funny. This is cotton dye, but hey, what else? All right, let's try, we're gonna try the charcoal gray next. And heck, if these work out as good as they look, I won't have to do a secondary dye. But I will because, you know, science, guys, science. Okay, this looks almost the same as the pearl as far as before I rinse it. This is should be a whole lot darker. This is char supposed to be charcoal gray. Now, I'm not really getting a charcoal gray. It's reading just like the pearl. No, nope, it's darker. How exciting, guys. But we're gonna do one, I'm gonna let it sit overnight and see what happens. Because my theories are all been wrong. More dye and overnight dyeing. That's what's gonna happen next. Let's see if I get any color difference. But that doesn't look bad at all. all right? I'll rinse out the other two colors and I'll show you what they're gonna look like. Okie dokie. So we have this, which was supposed to be a navy, which honestly looks gray to me. Or yeah, looks gray. It's okay, but it looks gray, not perp not dark blue. And I do enjoy this color. And this is supposed to be the teal. So not too bad. The blue definitely did not cut it. So what we're doing i added more dye and i even put some salt in everybody back here and then i'm going to mix up a green because i don't have a green um and the grays turned out to be the exact same color so i'm just going to add this water to that and then i'm going to top everybody else off with a little more water and this is boiling tea kettle water I'm gonna stir it all up. And we're gonna put all the, fill them up with this yarn and see what we can get, right? We'll see what happens. I'm gonna leave them overnight. This one will have to be stirred for quite some time. And then we're gonna to toss everybody in the pool and let them see what they're gonna to do tomorrow. All right, guys, this has been sitting overnight and I added a lot more of the dye. So now we're gonna see if it worked, right? Look at this, it looks purple. This is supposed to be the navy blue. Okay, you see what it looks like? It looks purple, but let's see if we were able to get a darker, it looks like we got darker. The last experiment I'm gonna do is straight liquid dye. I'm just gonna do straight dye after I rinse all these out. 
And then I'll show you what they look like. But this is definitely a dark purple, not navy blue. But we got to get all this dye out of here. Then we're just going to put in straight dye, no water. See if we can get that navy blue. Although that is a pretty color, but it's more of a purple than a blue. But that's okay. That's why we're experimenting, right? Let me just turn that down. Not quite so hot. All right. One more rinse. You definitely want to make sure you get all the guys out of here. Here you go. That's what the navy blue got us oops, while it's wet. So we're going to continue this process and let everybody dry and move on to the next step. We're back and this is going to be our final experiment with this stuff, with these dyes. I may come back and try some different dyes, but for now, this is what we have. So I have the same amount of pretty much yarn. We're gonna go straight. We are not going to um, con or dilute this with water at all. We are seriously just pouring the rest of the dye on top of this yarn. And we're gonna see how it does. So that's the turquoise. Here's the navy. I just want saturated colors, you know? And if it works, excellent. If it doesn't work, okay. Now, the third dye, I'm getting off plastic utensils. The third dye is definitely not something you wanna mess with without precautions. This is acid dye. This brand is Dharma Trading Company, but it, it's acid dye. It's, it's toxic, it's very toxic. So anything you use, these jars, plastic utensils, anything, has to be dedicated to this process. I have a whole dyeing system out in the garage where I dug all this from. You have to wear a mask when using this. The little, t when, you know, the tiny particles can get into your lungs. So I'm not recommending that everybody go out and get some of this acid dye. I'm just trying to see if it'll work, to be honest. This is called Oxblood Red, is the color. So if it works, yay us, to get that saturated color that I'm trying for. If it doesn't work, whatever, I had all the things. Okay, I may have to add a touch of water to this just to get it to color everything. Yeah, we're gonna have to add just, I mean like a touch of water. That was probably less than a tablespoon. So maybe one quick more. So I added the equivalent of most likely a tablespoon of water. And then I'm just mushing it around. I just want every bit of this colored with um, dye. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this turquoise. And then I'm just gonna, okay, there I added some water. It'll dilute it a little bit, but unfortunately the yarn soaked up the dye. Which, I mean, I guess is good, but I don't know if that's what I was going for, right? My hands are gonna be perma-dyed. So I'm just mushing this, making sure everybody got some dye. Like I see some white, you just wanna make sure. Yeah, and then this just has to stay in the dye. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna leave it until this yarn back here is dry. So maybe an hour or two, have my coffee. And then I'm not gonna have you watch me rinse it, but I'm gonna rinse it all out and let it all dry. And then I will show you the end result. So this will be sitting for about an hour in their prospective dye baths. And then I'm gonna clean up this mess. So we'll see you when it's done. Okay, I finished dyeing the yarn and we've learned a few things. Number one, 
I don't like polyester. <laughs> this is fun, but it's chenille. It's not really something I would knit with, um, but it's fun to use in finishing my cross stitch. So I bought this in the beige cream color and tried to dye it with different dyes. I had two of the RIT Dye More Synthetic. So in theory, nobody, in theory, oh, the cat. In theory, these should have dyed it because it's polyester. And then I had two bottles of the um, just regular RIT Dye Liquid. I had a box of Hunter Green or Dark Green Birdie. And then I pulled out my Oxblood Red Acid Dye that I use on wool. And this stuff is highly toxic. I want to say that again. So just be very careful if you're using acid dyes. And I'm going to show you my results. We're going to start with this turquoise. This is what color it was supposed to be. So I did a couple of experiments. First, I just dribbled some of the dye water and rinsed it right off. Super light, it's what I expected. Then, oh, I got a mess going on. Hold on. Uh, girl, get your life together. My life needs to be together. All right, let me just untangle this real or not. Then, I took that same turquoise. Mix it with hot water, like two tablespoons. Let this sit for two hours. And I got this color. It's a little muted, but I got that color. Then I doubled the recipe. I put like four, maybe six tablespoons. I mean, I just dumped a bunch in. Left it overnight. No difference. I mean, it's actually, this is a little brighter. This is a little toned down, but it's still in the same color. Then I took, oh, I should have, hold on, I'm tangled here. Then I took the remainder of the dye, so you saw, and I just poured it with a little touch of water to make it go where it needed to go and let it sit for several hours. Guys, it's all, it's a little lighter. It's lighter. And it was straight dye. So if you can see the difference, it's beautiful. I love it. It's a lighter turquoise. <laughs> it's just so funny. It's so funny how colors work for, to me. Um, and I know this, I dye wool yarn. I'm still trying to untangle things here, guys. I dye wool yarn. I know you can break colors and I will show you, I broke a color. And by that, what breaking a color means is in a color of dye, that you use black is all the colors. Other than your primary colors, there are other components. Purple is red and blue. Uh, you know, yellow and green make color. It's just basic color matching. So it's funny to me how things work out. So the next thing I did was the gray. I have two grays here. This one is actually charcoal, which looks like pearl to me. And this is the pearl. So they actually reacted differently than I thought they would, but they're both pretty shades of gray. These sat in the, bu in the bucket for the two hours. This was overnight. I got a really beautiful shade of gray and I mixed the two grays together for this. So there is definitely I have three separate shades of gray here. That's gray, right? Yeah, gray. Sometimes you have to wonder, and I'm gonna show you what, no, that is not the gray. <laughs> See what I'm saying? These are the two grays, and they turned out to be the exact same color. One was pearl gray, and one was charcoal gray. And they both, it all just turned out to be the same color of gray. This is navy blue. And this is what I got from the navy blue. And this is for synthetic. And it's a very light shade of purple. It broke into its components. So it's a light shade of purple. That was the two hours. 
And then, um, that's the overnight. So I definitely got a darker shade, but it is nowhere near blue. It is a dark purple. Pretty. It'll get used, but it's certainly <laughs> none of these are what I would anticipate them to be. Um, another teal here. I need to waddle that up. This was the blue. Guys, this is crazy. This is the blue that I literally just dumped undiluted blue. It's like the lightest shade of purple I've ever seen. No blue here. Now, just so you know, this is just a test on polyester. You can buy this yarn in any color you can fathom, but I just want to dye it and see. Blue. Now, here's the funny one. This is, oh, two of them are funny. The dark green. Emerald green, dark green. What is it called? Dark green. I got beige. What? Like, I broke this color. It's broken. I got beige. It's super pretty. It's like a khaki. I love it. It'll look really good with some of my antique samplers or little things that I'm doing. But how did I get brown out of green? I will never know. So, yeah. And then, lastly, and this one was not really a surprise to me. This acid dye, um... Is created for natural fibers. It's for organic animal wool, basically. I think it can do cotton, but it's definitely designed for like wool, this type of dye. And you have to use acid. So I put in it citric acid, if you saw the video, to ignite it or to activate the thing. It was the darkest red, like darker than this red. It is deep red. I love it. I got a really pretty shade of pink, which this does not surprise me. I'm actually kind of shocked that any dye I took. Um, and this sat in the bucket overnight as well. And I got a really pale, pale, pale pink. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Again, this is all going to be used. It was just for fun. I hope you enjoy it. Now, I will tell you, uh, most likely this video is going to go up on both of my channels, um, on my stitching channel, because this is what I will use when I'm, I can't find the end. This is what I'll use when I am finishing little pillows and as an accent. So I wanted to put it over there. And then I thought over on this channel, it will be fun to see. Um, dyeing is fun. I use Rit Dry to do tie-dye fairly regularly with my little cousins and I just thought it would be a fun experiment to do if you get your kids I know we're all kind of looking for things get some dye from your Walmart and you can tie-dye with it <laughs> just trying to get everybody look at it's uh staticky everybody in one little piece and then I'll bag it up but yeah it's it's fun dyeing is fun and I think that this summer we'll do some more dyeing. I want to do some whipped cream dyeing on the pillowcases. We were going to do it last summer, but it didn't happen. So I think we'll do it this summer. So anyway, Rit Dye, it's like $5.99 at Joanne. I feel like you can use your coupon on it. And we just had some fun. So I hope you enjoy, and I will talk to you later.